If you persuade us, we will listen. 85% of people over 65 took the vaccine. And my guess is if there is another way, which I don't think there's going to be another big one, but if there is, more people will go back and take it when they see people getting sick. We're not stupid. But the thing is, is the other side believes that we are, that, that they are elite enough to know the truth and we can't handle the truth. So when Dr. Fauci first said that no masks work, he was mostly telling the truth, but not completely. By saying no mask work, he was saying it, and he told us already, he said he was, he was lying. He was lying for our own good because he was afraid you would go out and buy the N95 masks, which do work. If you go to a hospital, if you want to know which masks work, ask a doctor or nurse what masks they wear when they go in the COVID room when somebody has COVID. It's only the N95 mask, and it works only because it's fit very tightly and worn properly and not touched, and you have gloves, and when you leave the room, guess what? The mask goes in the trash and the, and the gloves go in the trash. So there is a protection that works. But if I tell you if you cut up your T-shirt and wear it, that it's a great idea, they don't work. The pores of every cloth mask are bigger than the virus. They don't work. But he changed his mind and started telling us that all masks work. But that's a disservice also. If you're 80 years old and you're sitting at home and you're going to take care of your spouse, you would want to wear an N95 mask. You don't want to wear a cloth mask because they don't work. So he's once again encouraging to, to engage in behavior that is dangerous with faulty information. He's not being honest with it because we're not smart enough to handle the truth, he thinks. But here's the other thing. If you're 80 years old, and a lot of I mean, people, people on television don't realize this, but if I'm, I'm 58 years old and my wife gets sick, I'm staying with her. That's just my choice, and a lot of people are that way. But the thing is, is you know there's a treatment if your wife is sick or your husband is sick to prevent you from getting the disease? Monoclonal antibodies have been studied, and if you give monoclonal antibodies to somebody who's sick, who their spouse they're taking care of, there's a much lower incidence of getting the infection and a much higher incidence of surviving it. There are also some other over-the-counter treatments or prescription treatments that people have tried, but they're out there, but I haven't heard Dr. Fauci say one word about it. He's on TV 10 times a day, but he could be helping save lives. In fact, I think he will be responsible for tens of thousands of lives in India lost. Why? Because instead of prioritizing the vaccine to those who haven't had it, he's saying everybody should get it. What's well, terrible advice? You should start with those over 65. And then next you should do probably those overweight and over 40. And the very last people in line should be the youngest people, if at all. But you should prioritize it. There's not enough vaccine for the people that want it in India. They were having 6,000 deaths a day for the last couple of weeks. It's come down now. But the thing is, is they're talking about two years to vaccinate enough people to get to where they need to go. Well, it might do better if you weren't vaccinating the people who already had the disease. That cuts out millions of people. If you don't vaccinate the children, that cuts out millions of people. And you can target the people most at risk. These seem to me to be common sense, but he denies every one of these. That's the only reason they're talking about vaccinating children. They don't think we're at herd immunity, and in all likelihood we are. Will the vaccine be pretty safe for kids? Probably, but it should be your choice. You shouldn't be told it's like, oh, well, public school's a privilege. Well, I thought I paid taxes for the public school. I'm not going to get to go unless I'm vaccinated. My kid can't go to college unless I take the vaccine. He had it two months ago. Has anybody studied whether or not you get more side effects if you've already had the disease and you get the vaccine? We do know this, that if you've had the disease and you get the vaccine, you get a thousand times more response, an immune response, than someone who hasn't had the disease. Now, that might be good. You might be a thousand times better, or it could be that's where the side effects come from, from having so much of an immune response. We don't know the answer, but we should ask the questions. The bottom line is it's a different worldview. I'm of the world view that I believe in freedom so strongly that I believe in the freedom for you to disagree with me, the freedom to make your own choice. And like I say, while I would tell you maybe last month or in January or whenever not to go to church if you were at risk, I would never command that. It is your choice. My in-laws, we got them the vaccine immediately. My dad, for those of you who know, I'm not always persuasive with my dad. He would not take the vaccine. But it's his choice. He's 85 years old. He's lived a long life. That's his choice. We're going to hold people down. It's a free country. Make your decision. Persuade people. And I'm not trying to persuade people not to. But in a free society, you make your own health care choices. They shouldn't be commanded. I don't want to live in a world where i got to present papers, particularly to a bunch of nincompoops who aren't obeying the science. I've already had it. <laughs> i got as much immunity. They're like, you don't know how long your immunity will last. You don't know how long your vaccine will last. My immunity's lasted for a year and a half. 
by most of the studies. And the vaccine's been about around six months and it's doing pretty well. I'm not denying that the vaccine won't last for a while. Why do you deny natural immunity is going to last? Nobody knows. But the bottom line is we're going to get beyond this and we should learn some things from this. One of the most important battles over the separation of powers occurred from this, not in Washington, but in Frankfurt. And I think this is worth addressing because it makes a difference as to what happens the next time this comes around. In our state, the governor, uh, and in many states, issued executive orders. And these executive orders, he said, how many people can gather? This was illegal for most of last year. How many people can be in a restaurant where the restaurant can open? Apparently, COVID comes out after 10 p.m. because you can drink all you want before 10 p.m., but between 10 and 11, buddy, the COVID is out there in the bar, so you got to be gone. There's no signs based on that. Telling an eighth grade kid they can't run in the track meet outside without a mask, that, that's just not scientific at all. It's imbecilic. I mean, there's no science behind any of that. And yet everybody's like told to meekly submit. Coaches were fired from schools for not mandating masks to be worn outside. No science behind any of this. All conjecture, all based on the whims of one person, the governor. It's the reason we fought for probably more than a thousand years now against centralization of power. Because the thing is, is even if you agree with a lot of what I'm saying, you don't want me to dictate things. You don't want one person to be in charge of your decisions. We debate back and forth, and not everybody's going to agree. You make your decisions. That's the kind of country we wanted. It's why they fought against the king. It's why they had the Magna Carta at Runnymede. It's why all that happened. Why we separated. It was all about centralization of power and checks and balances. So our state legislature is supposed to be a check and balance. But we have one defect, and we're going to correct it, hopefully in the next time we have an election in 2022, and that is, should the legislature be able to call themselves in a session? I'd say without question now that it's yes because the governor was in office for nine months and they could do nothing. There was no law they could pass, no, no rebuke, nothing they could say, and he completely ignored them and did what he wanted. So they voted, and I think that's going to be on the ballot in 2022. Uh, can the state legislature call themselves back in session? I think it should be a yes because it's a check and balance to any governor. I don't care whether they're a Republican or a Democrat. I think the Republicans will win next time. I really think we'll win the governorship. But I want the Republican governor to be limited in power. I want there to be checks and balances. It isn't about party. It's about power. So the state legislature came back in in January, and they passed a law that says their previous law that they passed in the 90s, which allowed the governor to have executive power, that after 30 days his orders would expire unless approved by the legislature. This seems to be, to be eminently reasonable. It seems to be the check and balance that we need. The governor immediately sued in court and said that his powers are inherent. I think it's the divine right of governors or something he's referring to. He says he has power that's inherently his in times of public health crisis. But it's uncertain which way the Supreme Court will rule. This is maybe the most important Supreme Court ruling in Kentucky in our lifetime. They're going to rule over whether the state legislature can limit powers they gave him. In the 1990s, they gave the governor emergency powers but these emergency powers were what most of us would think would be an emergency. A tornado comes through LaGrange, and you, the National Guard brings water and food and clothing and tents for a few days and helps you get back on your feet. We could all accept that. That's an emergency. But determining what time a restaurant closes, how many people can be in a restaurant, where you wear a mask, where you don't wear a mask, what kind of mask you wear, all of that stuff can't be done by one person. But this is going to be divided by the Supreme Court. Our legislature was clear. They overrode the veto. They passed it, overrode the veto. And that's going to be the question, though. Are they going to nullify our state legislature? I think it's a horrendous decision, most important decision. They've heard the arguments, and we're going to hear the results sometime in the next week or two. This, to me, is a really big deal from someone who believes that the separation of powers, the division of power, and the checks and balances are some of the most important things that make our country what it is.